put on the HBC shirt, so it must be time for another devotional. I thought today we'd go back and look at James 1-4 a little more in depth and once again explore why we can count it all joy when we face various trials in our lives. Uh, and secondly, I thought maybe we'd finish being very practical about what type of situations and trials we are to endure and persevere in versus what kind of situations maybe we should escape and, and flee from. Uh, so James 1, 4, remember, reads, And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Uh, remembering that, that the word let there is not a permissive, it's a command, that we need to make sure that steadfastness has its complete work. Uh, remembering that the, the NIV translated is let perseverance finish its work. Uh, the message says don't try to get out prematurely from its work. So, so it's important for us to allow endurance to finish its work. Uh, I think we need to answer the, the why, what, what part of it is really important. And we got that picture from Paul Miller of a J-curve, that in our life, spiritually, physically, these trials on a small scale and even on a big scale represent a, a J, uh, that our suffering leads to death, which then can lead to resurrection and exaltation. But if we try to get out of suffering, if we try to get out of our trials too early, what we miss out on is the resurrection. Uh, it seems like a, a no-duh statement to say that, that without a death, there is no resurrection. But when we cut our suffering, when we cut our deaths short, we, we short-circuit our resurrection. And the resurrection is key. Paul tells us that we are amongst all people to be most pitied if there is no resurrection. If there's no resurrection, there, there is no Christian faith. Uh, the resurrection is the key to it all. And that, that applies physically to us at the end in our next life, but it also works out in this life in our suffering and our trials that we can take confidence and glory in resurrection. Paul lays this out in Philippians 2 and verses 8 and 9. And he's talking about Jesus, and he says that Jesus humbled himself by obedience to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name above all names. There's two things in that we need to understand. And the first one is that word, therefore. Paul is, is connecting what came before results in what comes after. That Christ's exaltation was dependent on his obedience through suffering. That he obeyed through suffering and death and death on a cross. Therefore, he becomes highly exalted. So he connects Christ's suffering and death to his resurrection and exaltation. Without one, you don't have the other. Second part I need, we need to notice is right after he says, therefore, he says, therefore, God has highly exalted him. God is the one responsible for our resurrections, not ourselves. Now, I doubt many of us have tried to raise ourselves from the dead because we haven't been in that situation. But, but even in our everyday life, when we face trials and tribulations, we try to resolve it. We try to resurrect ourselves in those situations, whether we try to defend our name, uh, whether we try to answer things physically or by, uh, through health issues. We try to bring about resurrection when it's all dependent on God. And if we allow him to have his finished work, if we are faithful on the obedience through the death and suffering part, he is faithful to resurrect us, to exalt us, and to bring that about in our lives. So I think that calls for some discernment on our part then. Am I supposed to face every adversity and just get through everything that, I, that comes in my life? Or am I allowed to flee some things? You know, Paul in Acts 14 in Iconium, him and Barnabas hear that the, the locals are going to stone them. Uh, and they flee. They go to other cities. Uh, so there are times that, that it's okay to flee persecution. It's okay to flee trials and tribulations. How do we know the difference? How do we know when to flee versus when to endure and persevere? Well, I think James 1.5, once again, is key to that, that, that we pray to God for wisdom. We need God's wisdom to understand those situations, to face those situations. His wisdom comes through prayer. It comes through knowing his word. It comes through fellowship with other believers that can help inform us whether this is a situation to endure, persevere in, or it's a situation to flee in. There are some practical things we can consider, though, uh, and there's two I want us to consider. Uh, one is when we've given our word. If we've made a, a commitment by our word, then more than likely we're to endure and persevere that situation, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a business contract. Often those things come about and, and staying, and it's not going to be for our betterment. Uh, 
but it is for the situation. I think many Christian businessmen would, would attest to the fact that they've, they've had to take a uh, financial beating to honor their word. And, and I think that's a biblical thing to do. Secondly is when we're under an obligation because of love. Uh, we know we are to love God and man. Uh, that's our, our great commandment. Sometimes that love requires us to do things to endure, to persevere, even to our own detriment. Think of Jesus in the garden. He prays for to be delivered from this, but nevertheless, he obeys and is obedient to death on the cross because of his love for God and his love for us. Love demands action, and it often demands action that causes our own death, that causes our own suffering, but we're under that obligation. That, that played out in the early church. David's told us about how the church grew in Rome because of the plague, people fled, but Christians stayed and cared for them. Happened in the Reformation with Luther. Uh, during In Germany, there was a plague. He stayed and he encouraged other pastors to stay and serve out of love. Love can obligate us to endure, to persevere through suffering. So my prayer for you this week is, is one, that you and I would be able to discern the situation. Is this something for us to endure and persevere in? And two, that if it is, that God would grant us the perseverance, the endurance we need to come through to enjoy the resurrection, the exaltation that he has for us.